Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a very interesting functional equation. We have f of x plus y plus z equals f of x times f of y times f of z. We're also given that f of 2 equals 4 and f prime at 0 is equal to 3. And we're supposed to evaluate f prime at 2. So let's see what we can do about it. First of all, I would like to replace x, y, and z with 0 because that's going to give me f of 0 on the left hand side. So I'm going to get f of 0 equals f of 0 times f of 0 times f of 0. What does that mean? It just means that f of 0 cubed, right? But let's go ahead and put everything on the same side. And we want to factor out a common factor, which is f of 0, 1 minus f of 0 squared equals 0. We have two factors. If we set each factor equal to 0, then we're going to get the following. First of all, f of 0 will be 0 from here, right? And then from the second one, f of 0 squared can be 1, which implies that f of 0 is either 1 or negative 1. So we're going to look at each one of these, okay? Now, if f of 0 is equal to 0, right? Here's what happens. Here's what the problem with the first one. If this is true, then we can basically replace y and z with 0 and get something like f of x plus 0 equals f of x times f of 0 times f of 0. Now what does that mean? It just means that f of x equals f of x times f of 0 squared. And now when you replace f of 0 with 0, this just means that f of x will be equal to 0 identically, right? But we do know that's not true because we are given that f of 2 is equal to 4. So f of x cannot be 0 for every x in the domain. Make sense? This is not good. So f of 0 cannot be 0. What else do we have? f of 0 equals 1 and f of 0 equals negative 1. Let's check this one. If f of 0 is equal to negative 1, let's see what happens, right? We kind of need to look at it. So suppose f of 0 is equal to negative 1. Now remember our equation is f of x plus y plus z equals f of x times f of y times f of z, right? Now go ahead and replace x and y with 1. This is very important, by the way, because you definitely want to double up on them and replace z with 0. You got it? Now, when you do that, this is going to be 1, this is going to be 1, and this is going to be 0. So here's what you're going to get from here. f of 2, because 1 plus 1 plus 0 is equal to 2, right, equals f of 1 squared times f of 0. Now, here's the critical part. If f of 0 is negative 1, this is f of 0, right? f of 1 squared cannot be negative. You're multiplying a non-negative quantity by negative. That means you're getting a negative quantity. So this would imply that f of 2 is less than 0. But we do know that's not true because this is not possible because f of 2 is equal to 4. Make sense? For this very reason, f of 0 cannot be negative 1 either. Great. What do we have left? This didn't work. This didn't work. And now we only have one choice left. And that has to be true. Right? f of 0 must be 1. So let's go ahead and write that down. You see, we had three choices, but two of them failed. Great. Now, f of 0 is equal to 1. Now, what can we do in our equation? Let's write our equation one more time. Isn't that fun? Let's just keep writing it f of x plus y plus z equals f of x times f of y times f of z. Awesome. What can we do with this, right? I mean, think about it. You know f of 2 and you're trying to find f prime at 2. And you also know that f prime at 0, right? So let's go ahead and replace y with 2 and z with 0. Now, why not x? Because we're going to leave the x alone, right? 
So this will be the 2 and this will be a 0. This will be a 2 and this will be a 0. Got it? So now we're going to get the following, which is very interesting, by the way. f of x plus 2 plus 0, which is f of x plus 2, equals f of x times f of 2 times f of 0. Guess what? We do know f of 0 and we do know f of 2. So we know both of those values. That's why it's important to use the 2 and the 0. Make sense? So that's how you choose these values. Well, we do know that, or at least it's given that f of 2 is equal to 4. And f of 0, we just found to be 1. Awesome. From here, what are we getting? We get f of x plus 2 equals 4 times f of x. Awesome. Why is this important? Well, here's the thing. You are given f prime at 0, and you're supposed to evaluate f prime at 2, right? So the difference is 2. And the difference between x plus 2 and x is also 2, which means we can use this equation. But we do need the derivatives. Therefore, let's differentiate both sides, shall we? If we do differentiate it by the chain rule, this is going to be f prime at x plus 2 times the derivative of x plus 2, but that's just 1, right? Because the derivative of 2 is 0, equals the constant doesn't matter times f prime. Great. This doesn't give us f prime or f or anything like that, but we can use what we know. f prime at 0 is equal to 3, so let's replace x with 0, and that gives us f prime at 2 equals 4 times f prime at 0. And we do know that f prime at 0 is equal to what? 3. So this is equal to 3, therefore f prime at 2 is equal to 12. Make sense? So we got the answer, but that took a lot of work, didn't it? Okay, so I want to introduce a second approach for this problem. So I want to talk briefly about the structure for this functional equation, because obviously sometimes you can guess and check, or if you know some special equations like Cauchy's functional equations, then you can easily get to the solution. Of course, we do need continuity, so on and so forth, but take a look at this expression. What would happen if we had two variables instead of three? Like, what would this tell you? f of x plus y equals f of x times f of y. Would you think of the exponential function, like f of x would be something like a to the power x, right? Doesn't that make sense? It satisfies this functional equation for sure. Why wouldn't it satisfy this one? Because it's the same pattern, we just extend it to three variables. Does that make sense? So I'm just going to assume, and you can call this second method if you want, I'm just going to assume that f of x is equal to a to the power x. And I do know that f of 2 is 4, but f of 2 is just a squared. So from here I can say that, hey, suppose a is equal to 2. I don't think it matters, and probably negative 1 is not a good choice, because the base should rather be positive. And now let's go ahead and take a look at this. Oh, by the way, this is not the whole thing, because we're also given that f prime is equal to 3. So if you differentiate a to the x, you get this. And then if you replace x with 0, you get ln a, which is supposed to equal 3. But that means a is equal to e to the third power, but then that kind of doesn't agree with a equals 2. Maybe we can go ahead and assume that f of x can be in this form, like k times a to the x, and then proceed from there. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.